All right. Oh, we've got a couple of people who are taking their NCLEX soon. All right. Good luck. Okay. So let's dive in. So before I tell you about um, what bootcamp is, um, I want to tell you a little bit about who Bootcamp is. Um, so here we are a team of dedicated nurse educators. Um, we have all come to education from different points in our career um, because we just, we love education. We're really passionate about it. And um, we love, like I said, helping people pass the NCLEX because we know it can be a really stressful time. Um, so between all of us, um, we have many, 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 many years of experience, and I can tell you that we are um, a bunch of perfectionists. <laughs> so we have obsessed over every small detail to bring you a study resource that truly looks and feels like the actual NCLEX. So let's kind of dive in here and I will show you around the site and what it looks like. So a lot of times when students first start studying for the NCLEX, they think, oh my gosh, where do I even start? This is so much content. You get those NCLEX study guides and they're like books about this thick and there's just, there's so much in there. You think, how do I even get through all of this? But don't worry, we have you covered because if we go over to our site, um, the first thing that we tell students to start with is our study schedules. So this takes the guesswork out of it for you. So this is what our live site looks like. And if we scroll down um, on the left-hand side, you'll see that we have some study schedules here for you. And so we have one month, two month, and three month study schedules. And so you can use um, any of these to line up with whenever you're taking the NCLEX. So say that you're taking the NCLEX in April, which is about a month out, or I'm sorry, May, <laughs> if you're taking NCLEX in May, um, that's going to be about a month out. Um, so our one month sch study schedule will probably be a really great fit for you. Um, so if we open this up, we can see what this looks like. And so we have it broken down week by week, day by day, so that you can make sure that you cover everything you need to uh, by the time you go to take the NCLEX. And the really great thing about this is that it breaks it down into nice, Manageable, manageable chunks so that you don't feel incredibly overwhelmed and you can get through all the content that you need to. So if we take a look at where to start, we first uh, recommend that you start with our next generation class, uh, which Dr. Emily leads for us. And you might have met her um, in one of our webinars before. Um, and then it tells you which case studies to do. It tells you when to take the readiness exams, and then it tells you what questions to answer. So we'll kind of walk through all of these pieces so that you can see where all of these are located. Okay, so like we said, the first thing we tell you to do is take that next generation course. And so you can find that um, under um, the left hand panel over here under review that we have this next generation course. And so Dr. Emily has done just a fantastic job of setting this up for you because we know that the next generation NCLEX can seem a little um, daunting because it is somewhat new um, and she covers everything you need to know. So she covers the basics of the NCLEX, what to expect, and then talks all about those new next generation case studies. So you'll see um, how to approach a case study. She'll take you through a full length case study, gives you give you a bunch of tips and tricks about how to approach these um, and make you feel a lot more comfortable going into answering those questions. All right, and then from there, you'll see on the study schedule, it breaks it down into what standalone questions that you should be answering each day. And so these questions are going to come from our comprehensive test bank, and we have about 1,500 questions in there. Um, and these are gonna cover all the topics that you need to know for the NCLEX, and you can customize um, which questions you wanna take on what day, and I'll show you that. So at bootcamp, one of our biggest mottos is that you should be studying smarter and not harder, right? And so we don't think that you need to answer 10,000 questions to be ready for the NCLEX. We think you need to answer about 1,100 really high quality um, questions that are going to enhance your learning like what we have in our test bank. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can get to our um, standalone questions from two places. You can either come here on our left-hand panel um, where it says standalone questions and you will see those standalone questions are going to be broken down um, by subject area. So you can make a test plan um, or create a test of adult health questions, child health, critical care fundamentals, um, whatever it is that you're um, going to be working on that day. The other way that you can get to it is through our create a test button. 
And this is fantastic because you can customize this one to your heart's content. So you can either take it in tutor mode or timed mode, and then you can pick from our question pool. You can use um, the unused questions or the questions you haven't answered yet, or you can um, pull from your tagged questions. And I'll show you what uh, that means in just a little bit. Um, you can also create um, a practice test based on subject. Um, so if you leave all of these checked, you'll get um, a variety of topics from all the different categories, including case studies. Um, but say we want to focus on pharmacology today. And so I say I want to focus on psychopharmacology just because I'm in mental health, right? <laughs> so I'm going to uncheck that button right there. Um, I'm going to go over to pharmacology and toggle that down. And so you can split this out if we want to do um, cardiovascular pharmacology, endocrine, gastro, um, what have you. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to check psychiatric pharmacology because that's what we want to focus on uh, today for our study. Um, but I'm actually going to go up here and click my bookmark questions because I did pull a few specific questions that I want to show you. So if we do that and then we start a test, um, we can see it's going to pop up with our questions. And the nice thing about our questions is that these look very similar to what you'll see on the actual NCLEX interface. And we've done this because we don't want you to have any surprises on test day. We don't want you to get thrown off by maybe things looking a little bit different. We want you to see something that looks uh, very similar um, to the NCLEX. So um, since we're here, we might as well answer this question together. So I'm going to be um, asking for some audience participation in our chat. Um, so let's take a look at this question. We can answer it and then take a look at what it looks like after we submit it. Um, so we have a nurse who's assessing a client who's diagnosed with major depressive disorder whose dose of fluoxetine was increased yesterday. Which assessment finding is most concerning? So this is kind of a prioritization question, right? So what do you guys know about fluoxetine? What kind of medication is this? Does anybody know? So this is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, right? And so we use these for depression, we use them to treat anxiety. What do we know about common side effects of SSRIs? Okay, I can see people are starting to answer. Yep, it's an SSRI. What are common side effects of SSRIs? Do you know? Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay in the chat. But SSRIs, right, we have those GI side effects, right, are really common. Those sexual side effects are really common. Headaches can be common. Yep. What do we know about how long SSRIs take to start working? They can take a couple weeks, right? So usually we start that dose and we tell people keep taking it, even though you don't notice a difference right away. It's going to take a couple weeks uh, to start working. And what do we know about the really... Um, the severe side effects, like the dangerous um, adverse reactions that we might see with antidepressants. Yeah, serotonin syndrome, right? And serotonin syndrome is kind of one of those things that we're always on the lookout for because that could be potentially fatal. Yep, you guys got it. Good job. All right, so knowing that, I think we can probably answer this question, right? So what do you guys think is the answer? We already said nausea and headache were pretty common side effects, right? So are we super concerned about these? Mm, not so much, right? Because we know these are common side effects. Um, but what about low mood? The dose was just increased yesterday. So would we expect this client to be feeling better already? Mm, it's probably going to take a while. Now, if this client was saying that they were feeling suicidal, I would definitely be more concerned about this, right? But ongoing low mood, you know, we wouldn't expect that, that uh, fluoxetine to start working for a couple of weeks anyway. So that's not really unexpected. But what about beads of sweat on the forehead? What could that mean? I see you all are answering. Yeah, everyone likes number four. What might that mean? What are you thinking? Yeah, that could be a sign of serotonin syndrome, right? So that's pretty concerning. We definitely want to follow up on that, right? So let's see. I think we're probably correct. So if we submit this, um, this is what it's going to look for you, look like for you when you're practicing. We're going to get some information that pops up. So on our left-hand side, we're going to get this box down here. 
And this is going to give us some really helpful information. So that's going to tell us um, if we got the answer correct or incorrect. And yes, we got full credit. We got one out of one points. Um, and then if we go um, to the right, we're going to see how many people answered this question correctly. So it's going to give you an idea of kind of where you're at in the pack of your peers. And so about 50% of people are answering this question correctly. So congratulations to all of you who got that correct. You're, you're ahead of the curve. Um, that's also going to give you an idea of like how um, uh, difficult this question is. Um, it's going to tell us our scoring rule if we move a little further to the right. And this is a 0-1 scoring rule on this question because it's a multiple choice question. So we get zero points for incorrect answers, one point for correct answers. And then we get our time spent. And this is really helpful um, when we're um, preparing to pace ourselves when we're taking the NCLEX because we know that the NCLEX, um, we have five hours to take it and there's a maximum of 150 questions. And so if we do the math, um, we should be answering um, taking about two minutes per question. So if we got the maximum amount of questions, we could make sure that we finished that exam. Um, so we're kind of aiming for that two minute per question um, average. And then if we go over um, a little bit further on the right, we're gonna get our explanation for this question. And this is kind of where the magic and the, ha and the learning happens. So you will see that we have um, our explanation telling us why the correct answer is correct. And of course, like we talked about, we're talking about uh, serotonin syndrome and how we were concerned because sweating is a symptom of serotonin syndrome. So it's going to talk a little bit about that. And the nice thing is we try to embed a lot of uh, images into our explanations because we know that not everybody learns the same way. Some people are more visual learners. And so, um, it can be really helpful, helpful to have that visual illustration of the topic that we're talking about. So you can see here, we have a nice illustration of kind of what serotonin syndrome might look like. We have all the symptoms kind of illustrated out for us. So we might have that muscle rigidity, we might have um, the high blood pressure, the tachycardia, the sweating, all of that. And then we have some images embedded throughout our explanation as well. So if we click on those, we can see um, kind of a nice depiction of how selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors work. So if you want a visual of that, and if we go down, we can see that this is our correct answer explanation. We talk about why it's correct. And then we also have a lot of learning built into our incorrect answer options. So um, these are going to tell us why those answers are incorrect and why people might have chosen them, right? Or what might've tripped you up. And then if we go all the way to the bottom, we have this nice key takeaway section. And this is a really great piece to focus on because this focuses on what is the key concept that you should learn from this question? Because of course we can't predict exactly what questions you're going to get on the NCLEX, but we can kind of predict themes, right? So if you're being asked about safety in SSRIs, chances are they're going to be asking you about serotonin syndrome. So we're talking about these are all the symptoms that might indicate serotonin syndrome. We wanna be on the lookout for that with our SSRIs. And that way, if you get a question on the NCLEX about serotonin syndrome, you'll be able to answer it because you understand this concept, even though it's not the exact same practice question that you got. All right, and if we go down even further, there's a few more resources I wanna point out to you. Um, so we have our Ask Bootcamp AI feature. And so this is where you can type in some questions um, about why is this answer incorrect or you know, ask it to tell you a little bit more about a certain topic and that will generate your response um, if you're looking for a little bit more information. And if that's not enough and you still have questions, you can come down to the very bottom and you can contact our team. So if you click on this, it's going to pop up a chat box for you and it's going to tag um, the question that you're um, you're asking about and you can send a message to one of us. And so this is going to be answered by an actual nurse and you'll get a response back in a couple of hours. So we love feedback or if you have questions about the question that you answered, we'd love to hear from you. So don't be afraid to take advantage of that. Okay, so that kind of sums up our question bank. So once we were to do these questions, we would hit um, end to end our practice test. And that's going to generate us a report. And so I had two questions tagged in this one. So um, I got 50% right. So that's, I guess, okay. <laughs> um, but it's going to generate you a report. So chances are you're going to be generating a practice test with more than just two questions in it. And it's going to tell you how well you did overall. And it's going to tell you how well you did in comparison to everyone else who has taken those questions. So it's going to kind of let you know where you are um, in the pack. You'll get a nice little note from Dr. Emily talking about how you can improve um, your test taking.
And then it's going to give you um, a subject breakdown. So if you were generating a practice test that covered a lot of different topics, it's going to tell you areas that you did really well in and maybe some areas that need more attention. All right, so let's go back and take a look at some of our case studies because we know that the next generation NCLEX has case studies, right? And so luckily we have 50 case studies that you can practice with. So there is a lot of them. And so I wanna show you um, what those look like. And so our case studies are gonna cover a really wide variety of topics. And so you can get to our case studies um, from a few different areas. So if we were to go back to our main screen, you can see that they're housed right here under case studies. And so we have case studies in um, adult health, we have case studies in child health, maternal and OB, mental health, critical care, so all the topics that you might see on the NCLEX. And if we take a look at what those look like, you can see that our case studies are set up to look very similar to the actual NCLEX. And so you're going to see all the different item types that the NCLEX might use. Um, so if we click through, you can see that we're gonna have matrix type questions, we have drag and drop questions, we have SATA questions, um, all to mimic what the NCLEX actually looks like. So let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna go back to question one. So like you know, all the case studies have those six questions in them. And so this is a highlight type question. So in this case, we would go through, and I'm just going to randomly pick um, a few answer options here. And so if we're looking for the three findings that are most concerning, so we would pick our answers and then we would go ahead and submit. And that's going to generate um, a similar response to what we saw with our standalone questions. So it's going to tell us um, how many we got correct. So I got one correct with my random clicking. <laughs> and then it's gonna tell us that time we spent on the question, right? So we wanna aim for that two minutes. And then if we scroll down, the thing that our students uh, really say that they love about our case studies is we have these really great video rationales. So you're going to get a video by an actual nurse, it's less than five minutes, and it's going to tell you um, why the correct answers are correct and why the incorrect answers are not correct. And it's going to tell you how to think about this client to get to that, um, get to those correct answer choices. So this is just like having your favorite professor, your favorite clinical preceptor, standing there with you, looking at that client and saying, this is what I'm seeing. This is how I arrived at these correct answers, which is really helpful. And so you can see that we can kind of scrub through here. And in this case, Dr. Emily is telling you all about um, this case and why uh, those correct answers are correct. And the nice thing is, is that every single question in all of our case studies is going to have that video walkthrough. And so, like I said, they're less than five minutes, so they're short, they're concise, but they really help you understand what you need to know to answer these questions successfully. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is, you probably noticed on our study schedule, is that it was telling you when you should take your readiness exams. And so we have four readiness exams available uh, to you on bootcamp.com that are going to help uh, predict for you how likely you are to pass the NCLEX. And so these readiness exams are not just a random compilation of practice questions and case studies. These readiness exams were written specifically based on the NCSBN test plan, which means the content that you're going to see in these readiness exams is going to be very similar to the content that you will see on the actual NCLEX. And by that, I mean that about 18% of questions on this readiness exam are going to be management of care, 14% are going to be physiological adaptation, 12% reduction of risk, and so on and so forth. So the content on the readiness exams closely matches the NCSBN test plan. So that helps us really predict how ready you are to take the exam. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, so you can find our readiness exams over on uh, the corner or on our left hand panel under the standalone questions you'll have our readiness exams and like I said there's four of those and so usually we would have you do one when you start studying with us um, one or two in the middle depending on how long um, you're you're taking to study for the NCLEX and then one at the end and so hopefully you should see um, that prediction go up as to how likely you are to pass so if we start this exam you'll see that these are gonna look, um, the questions look the same as our practice questions, and so we would go through. Um, but as we submit each question, 
Um, this simulates the NCLEX environment, so you're not going to get the pop-up on the right-hand side uh, showing you um, the explanation uh, for the question. You're just going to go through all 100 questions, and there's four case studies embedded throughout each exam, and you're just going to answer questions. And I'm just going to randomly pick some answers here so we can see. But once we got to the end of this exam, we got to question 100, we would submit it. And this is just letting me know that I have some unanswered questions since I don't think you all want to watch me answer 100 questions. Um, but then we're going to submit our exam. And it's going to generate us a really nice um, report. And unfortunately, with my random clicking, I have a pretty low chance of passing the NCLEX. Um, but you can see here that you're going to get a score. So it's going to be either low, borderline high, or very high. And it's going to give you um, a score. So you can see that the average score on this exam is 64%. So you can see if you're scoring um, above or below the average. And then you're going to get another um, nice note from Dr. Emily um, telling you about uh, where you should focus your study, how to studies, and how to improve this score. And then if we keep scrolling down, you're going to get a subject breakdown. And so this is going to tell you um, what areas you did really well in and maybe what areas that need a little bit more attention. So you may have done really well in pharmacology, but management of care, you said, ooh, maybe I need to spend a little bit more time um, giving some attention to that area. And you can even break that out by um, specific question of which ones you got correct and which ones you got incorrect. So it really gives you some great um, data in terms of where you're doing well and where you need to focus a little bit more on. And then you can even scroll down further and it's going to tell you specifically which questions you got correct and which questions you got incorrect. All right, and then there's just a few more resources I want to show you um, on our live site. So if we go down, um, you can see this performance tab is over here on the left hand side. And so if we click on that, that is also going to give us a really good indication of how uh, ready we are to take the NCLEX. And so you can see it's going to break it out by subject performance as a whole. And so these are based off um, the standalone questions and the case studies that you do in your um, um, from your practice. And so you can see which areas you're doing really well in and again, which areas might need a little bit more attention. Um, and then if we scroll up to the top, you have these two main targets. And these are also very helpful to take a look at in terms of how ready you are to take the NCLEX. So you can see that um, for people who have met both targets, uh, they're 99% likely to pass the NCLEX. And so what these mean is this first one is your overall score. So all of the practice questions that you're answering, this is going to give you a percentage of how well you're doing. And so we want to see that average at about 61% or higher. And then this one on the right hand side is um, your questions tagged. And that is going to tell us how much of the test bank that you've seen. So the reason we do that is because say you came in and you're like, I love child health. I'm great at child health. I'm answering all the child health questions. And you do that and maybe your score is like 90% because you just really know your child health. But if you haven't answered all the other questions about like management of care and mental health and critical care, we can't definitively say that you're ready to take the NCLEX because you haven't seen a wide variety of topics. And so that's what this one helps us determine is if you've seen about 1100 questions in our test bank, we can say that you've seen a good variety of topics and that should prepare you to um, prepare you for whatever questions you might see on the NCLEX. All right. So there is one other thing um, I want to show you is our tagging system. So if we go back um, to our questions, um, we can see, I'm just going to pick our answer here, um, that we have these tags on the bottom. So we can see these red, yellow, and green tags. And so if you don't click on any of these, these questions will auto tag. So if we got the answer correct, it's going to tag it as green saying, hey, we know our stuff, we're good to go on this topic. But if I had kind of randomly guessed, like I just happened to click number four on this question and I say, oh, I don't really know it that well, I can tag this as either still learning um, or reviewing. And that is going to tag those questions for me so that when I go back to create a test, I can click on um, all those questions I'm either reviewing or that I've tagged as still learning that I don't feel that confident in. So it really helps us focus our studies on those areas that maybe we're feeling a little bit weaker on. All right. So, 
Um, a few additional resources that we have, um, of course, we have our Facebook study group, and you all know that because you're in it right now. Um, but uh, we do um, offer live weekly webinars here. Um, so we have one coming up uh, next week uh, with Dr. Emily talking all about case studies. So that's going to be on April 16th at 3 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you um, register for that and join us um, and then last week we had Dr. Amber, Amber, uh, Dr. Amber Adams talking all about delegation. That was a really great webinar as well. It's archived on our Facebook page if you want to go take a look at that. Um, so if you have any friends or any cohort members who are also gearing up to take the NCLEX, make sure that you come down and hit that invite button uh, right here so that um, they can join as well and join in on our weekly webinars um, because we don't want anyone to miss out on all the great resources that we have available. Um, so, of course, you can start studying um, for free um, on uh, bootcamp.com. And then if you decide that you want to upgrade um, to get full access, you can do that. Um, and Emily is going to be dropping those links to get here um, in the comments. And the good news is that um, if you're in our webinar today, you will get 25% uh, off um, your, your all access um, pass. And so the code to that is going to be webinar 25 and Emily's going to drop that over there in the comments so that you can take advantage of that and you'll get 20 25% off that price. All right, so I am going to leave you um, with a list of links of where you can find us. Um, so make sure that you follow us on social media. Um, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on YouTube. Of course, we're on Facebook, which is where we are right now. Uh, we really, really love to hear from students. So let us know how the studying is going. Let us know if you have feedback. Of course, let us know when you take the NCLEX and when you pass it, because we love to hear those stories so much. So um, wherever you are on social media, make sure that you drop in and tell us hi, because uh, we really love to hear from students. So I'm going to hang out uh, for a few minutes if you have any questions. And of course, Emily's in the chat answering all those questions as well. Um, or if you just want to say hi, um, that would be great too. <laughs> so does anybody, um, has anybody been using Bootcamp? Um, how, let us know how it's, how it's going for you. Yeah, it looks like a couple of people are using it. Gemma is loving Bootcamp. I like it. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll be in the chat. Um, Emily's going to be working on answering all of your questions for you. Like I said, we would love to hear from you. So let us know if you have any questions. And like I said, make sure to join us next week um, with uh, Dr. Emily on uh, April 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for um, going over case studies. So she's going to walk you through those case studies and get you feeling really confident with those. So I will see you um, at our next webinar. All right. Thanks everybody for joining. Take care.